Thank you, Dhanashree and Mohit, and good morning, viewers. My name is Dheeraj Gyani, and I lead the education and government engagement for GitHub. And today, I have pleasure of hosting this discussion on Code is Building India. We heard this morning on how software is made in India. And in true sense, this is driven by the Indian developers, all, all of you. And no surprises that India is the leader when it comes to adoption of AI, also in contributing to AI-related code on GitHub globally. And it's such an honor to have Miss Anna Roy, who's playing a crucial role in enabling all this for our country. Ms. Roy is an Indian Economic Services Officer and has held multiple roles in the government. Currently with Niti Aayog, she leads the vertical dealing with data management and frontier technologies. I have closely followed her work in building the national strategy on artificial intelligence, blockchain, and many other tech-led initiatives in the government. In fact, last Friday, I witnessed the launch of National Data Analytics Platform, which will facilitate access to huge repositories of published government data. And she has been leading initi that initiative as well. Ms. Roy also heads the Women Entrepreneurship Platform at Niti Aayog that works towards developing the entrepreneurial ecosystem for women. Welcome, Ms. Roy. Niti Aayog has been, uh, is India's premier think tank, helping create a shared vision for our country. In that aspect, how important is technology strategy and how does Niti Aayog think about it for India? Uh, thank you, Dheeraj. First of all, uh, I would like to thank the organizers to, uh, who have given me this opportunity to address a community which I feel is really driving uh, the uh, change today. And Niti is all about transformation. So very happy to be here. Uh, you spoke about the strategy on technology. Uh, Niti, as the name suggests, you know, is uh, not an organization which is too much into uh, the current implementation. For that, we have relevant administrative ministries, but Niti um, is uh, the premier think tank which is supposed to kind of give a vision, a long-term, medium-term, and a proposed uh, road ahead on how, uh, you know, various aspects need to be dealt with, what needs to be done to achieve that vision. So in that case, strategy becomes very important and that is uh, at the core of Niti's function. Um, if we just focus on technology per se, I will come to the other domain areas, um, you know, uh, specific technology, how do we kind of uh, promote development of technology? How do we promote adoption of technology? What are the technology spheres that we should look at? Then I take you back to 2018 when we came out with the national strategy on artificial intelligence. In se uh, several uh, ways, you know, that really led the path of, um, uh, of uh, starting a dialogue on the uh, adoption, promotion, um, and building an ecosystem for uh, development of technology in the country in a very, very cohesive manner. I, I won't say uh, it, it's not as if nothing was happening in uh, before that, but from 2018 onwards, it, it has been happening in a more cohesive and collaborative pattern where we have identified various, uh, 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 you know, players and who are working together to develop a strategy uh, where Niti plays a very critical role as uh, since it provides a platform for all stakeholders including the government, research, academia, industry, to all come together and uh, in a very collaborative and consultative manner, come out with a strategy. So starting from the AI strategy, you will see Niti uh, lead the way in other areas, whether it is clean uh, energy, whether it is, uh, you know, the uh, clean mobility, when you talk about EVs, so Niti has been driving the, the entire strategy space where uh, adoption and promotion of technology in the country is, uh, uh, you know, involved. That's so true, ma'am. In fact, I have met so many people who have been benefited out of the great work coming out of Niti IO, uh, especially the green energy, what we talked today, and even the national strategy on AI. Uh, I was with my previous organization and we have seen tremendous work happening on the ground because of that policy. So thank you, thank you for that. 
Now, I think I have been personally, I've been a big fan of your work around inclusion uh, and, and, and especially tech inclusion. And you know, that's even the objectives of the government today that we see digital and tech inclusion is, is big on agenda. So how do you ensure an inclusive tech policy framework and its rollout? So I will again take you back to 2018 um, and the cornerstone of the uh, uh, strategy was really inclusion. How do we ensure that we don't have islands of, uh, you know, excellence um, in, in a huge uh, area of, you know, uh, where uh, not much is happening. So inclusivity and democratizing uh, was uh, democratizing access to infrastructure was one of the key things which we focused on. Um, and since 2018, we have been addressing it uh, in different uh, fashion. We also were required to do it because that was also the mandate uh, given by the government. And in all fora, whether it is our honorable prime minister or any of the other uh, you know, representatives of the government, it is again and again um, uh, stressed that uh, you know, you know, inclusive uh, inclusivity, no matter what we are doing, uh, needs to be uh, stressed. Uh, so I will just give a few examples in that um, you know area. First of all, uh, we started from 2014 to really leverage the India stack, and we came to uh, you know uh, the India stack experience and India stack UPI and various other initiatives that followed uh, that uh, you know um, that particular uh, initiative has really revolutionized the financial sector uh, uh, in in a big way uh, so we started off with payment and then you know we have this uh, uh, wonderful uh, consent based data sharing uh, framework uh, which was uh, brought out essentially uh, developed by i spirit where niti collaborated in uh, launching the paper. So that is the second phase, which I will say really marked the progression towards inclusivity, the DEPA framework. And, uh, the, the, and you know, the framework was really uh, very proactively adopted by our regulators, also with RPI coming out uh, with the guidelines for a, a regulatory sandbox where AAA could be uh, really um, evolved as well as giving uh, licenses to several companies to be the consent managers. So I think that I will mark as the second most important uh, um, aspect. The third is really developing the digital goods. So uh, one of the uh, important uh, platforms which uh, uh, we played a very big role in uh, conceptualizing, uh, giving a vision and then incubating and then, you know, handing it over to an implementing authority is really the ULIP platform. Now, what does ULIP do? ULIP is also translating what happened in India stack in the financial sector. So we have a three-layered approach where we have integration, data integration at the bottom. Then in the middle, we will have a, a data governance and data exchange protocols. And on the top is the uh, consumer in interface. So what does it really do? It provides access to data to everybody. So you don't have to be a deep pocket. You don't have to be a big company to have access to data and develop, you know, uh, various tools to address the uh, uh, various issues in the logistics space. You can be a startup. You can be a small time, you know, company and you can and address the last mile problems of the logistics sector by leveraging ULIP. So ULIP has come a long way, and in uh, this year's budget, Honorable Finance Minister, uh, you know, recognizing uh, how uh, ULIP is revolutionizing the, uh, uh, you know, the logistics space, and uh, kind of uh, aligned with the Gati Shakti uh, initiative of the government, uh, she uh, announced that a similar platform should be built for passenger tra uh, travel. Uh, the next thing I will, so this is the public digital, um, uh, you know, platform. Now, two other initiatives which we have driven from NITI is one is the National Data Analytic Portal, which you, you yourself mentioned at the beginning, which was launched on the 13th, and that is addressing the last mile access to data. Now, all the data, you know, as it is uh, said in various promotional videos, we 
we uh, we we uh, india is very data rich today thanks to the digital uh, you know push given by the government and very very uh, successful digital india movement uh, but all this terabytes of data which comes from surveys which comes from uh, various other sources the uh, use is limited because that last mile was not being addressed so endap is addressing that so now as a journalist you, uh, they can go to endap and have easy access a researcher can go a student can go on endap and have easy access and this is in line with government's philosophy of providing easy access to data and democratizing access to data and last but not the least is the women entrepreneurship platform which we have developed uh, within niti and it's a aggregator platform uh, uh, which really you know uh, is providing a seamless access to all Uh, initiatives which are there in the ecosystem which benefits the women entrepreneurial ecosystem uh, in a single window kind of a thing and when i say single window it is not as if you will be taken to some other platform it provides access to initiatives uh, through a smart search uh, and all kinds of initiatives whether by the government private corporate any other international body at the click of a button with smart search with various other uh, you know uh, uh, to a uh, features which are there on the platform thank you awesome awesome i think there's there's so much wonderful work happening at the government level today and then on the other hand we have we have thousands of developers listening to you right now uh, on twitch on youtube on twitter on across multiple channels how do you look at democratizing data and get help of you know all the passionate developers that we have because they really want to contribute to to nation building uh, and not only developers we have a lot of tech providers also so how do you get them to support the program support your initiative the initiatives that you are running so you know since uh, github has done such a wonderful job in getting the developer community you know collaborate and kind of uh, develop this open source uh, tool so both wep and endap are really digital platforms i i i would like to restrict my comments to these two platforms because i am personally involved in it so i will use this uh, uh, you know your program as a call for action to all the developer community to come and join hands with us to help us develop it now whether it is endap in endap also we are uh, trying to see how new tools can be uploaded we don't want to reinvent the wheel uh, but of course it is being developed by a, a you know by one company which is under contract so going, we have to kind of uh, be in uh, quote unquote within the frames of that contract Uh, which uh, niti i have signed with the uh, tech developer but that has not stopped us from reaching out to other companies and today we are in talks with several companies who want to integrate their tools with endap so that the endap engine really gets uh, energized we provide more uh, features uh, by this integration and so, uh, though the public launch only happened uh, you know this week on friday Uh, this is these are very early days but i think your program is very very uh, timely for us and i would uh, we would also use our social media to reach out to this community but i would request you also to reach out to the community to re, uh, to come and uh, you know discuss with us how they can collaborate with enda the second uh, platform which is more open source i would say compared to enda because enda is with data and we have to be a bit uh, you know circumspect uh, about the quality of data which is being uploaded various other tools a lot of uh, you know, things go into uh, go into it uh, but uh, the wep is something where we are now at a very uh, point of inflection uh, where we are trying to see uh, you know take it to the next level uh whatever happened in the past uh, let me tell you the first wep platform was developed by Uh, the niti interns and uh, over time uh, you know various partners have uh, joined hands to develop various modules they flipkart developed the community page and we took uh, towards other people to come and develop uh, individual modules now we are trying to you know uh, kind of uh, take stock of what we have and whether we are on the right path 
and see how our next journey next uh, phase of this journey should evolve so we are in that design thinking phase and wep presents another uh, you know very very um, important platform for developers to come forward uh, use the platform not only use but also uh, work with us to uh, develop specific modules add on to it and work with us in different uh, you know uh, aspects so that of course we are open to uh, um, have a dialogue with the uh, developer community and see how we can uh, evolve this platform to become a uh, really a world leader in a aggregator uh, kind of a sense thank you ma'am i think that's that's a great call for action for all of us all the developers listening to you all the tech provider i think that's a wonderful opportunity to really contribute back to to our nation so i think some some great call to action and things to do at all our end thank you i want to stay on on the developer topic and i think you know we have seen that india's leadership in tech is is kudos to the developer the individual developers the mind that we have in india and who's doing some who are doing some awesome work the other area where india really leads is open source software development so your thoughts around how can indian developers and open source software development really accelerate the digital india mission so you know uh, digital india mission is all about inclusivity and as mr khan who is the ceo of niti ayog open says we need to have a system which allows a thousand flowers bloom so we do not want to be restrictive we want to have a system which allows uh, people to kind of come up with solution atal innovation mission is one such initiative of niti ayog which really promotes uh, this kind of a initiative uh, where the developer community uh, you know through by participating in their challenges uh, can kind of contribute to nation building uh, and as a prime minister also keeps on saying you know do not uh, adopt tech for just the sake of tech use tech as the vehicle for problem solving and uh, for that to achieve that you know uh, organizations like niti ayog is there what kind of uh, uh, help can can be provided because government uh, sees itself in the role of being a enabler a catalyst and government like it has been moving away from the business development phase in various sectors and uh, even in tech space government wants to kind of you know be the enabler be the facilitator and allow this huge uh, uh, demographic dividend and the huge uh, potential which we have uh, in this country uh, to uh, take this uh, mission forward so uh, this is again in uh, again a space where a lot of collaboration is required uh, where you know you must realize we are not really the custodian of all kind of um, uh, you know uh, all, we we don't have all the wisdom and we look towards uh, the developer community we look towards academia we look towards industry to come up with suggestions we will have a open mind and how to take this forward is something that i assure you that we will be there to work with you but it 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 can't be said that okay government should bring out abc it has to be from both sides so in case you do not uh, you know find us as a good collaborator at that stage you can say look i did abc and i did not get a response so government is providing platforms whether it is the atal innovation mission whether it is the endap where we have uh, you know have been uh, kind of doing challenges and going forward we plan to do several such hackathons and other challenges whether it is ulip where uh, nictc has already done a challenge and we have you know have several winners so i i would say that uh, the community also needs to be responsible to come up and proactively work with the government absolutely true ma'am i'll I'll switch gears and i want to probably ask you the last question we are short of time but that's that's your area of your passion and 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 you lead the the women entrepreneurship ecosystem uh, at niti ayog uh, we would love to hear more about that the work that that's happening and what what can we do to support that 
absolutely so you know it was an idea and how i uh, uh, see my work is to uh, come up with solutions for uh, dealing with specific problems so when we came up with the vision of enda it the problem was how do we ensure that we don't need a huge amount of work to um, uh, draw insights from certain data sets it's not as if you know we are creating this data we are not creating this data all that we are doing is uh, you know identifying the use cases of that data so our starting point on endap is first identifying the use cases otherwise you know all this data being there is just lying there so we have started that from the other way round we first identify the use case then we identify the data set then we you know look for the data and put it in a schema and so going forward for that use case and you know we keep uh, we keep on updating data so that use case gets solved on the fly so you can come on the platform and use the features of the platform to solve that one particular use case that's a journey today we have uh, around um, i think uh 165 or 65 i'm uh, kind of um, i'm not very sure but these many use cases and it is just the beginning similarly the second problem that we encountered was how to overcome the information asymmetry that exists in the uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem for women uh in 2017 in the global entrepreneurship summit uh, at the close of the summit mr khan said that in his interaction with all the women uh, entrepreneurs he realized that there is a lot of lack of information and he announced setting up of a, a women entrepreneurship cell and he made me in charge of that now when i it was all very new for me uh and uh, when i started working on the subject i realized there are so many cells so many initiatives so many programs that we do not really need another cell for dealing with this issue so we came up with the idea of a platform which will be the aggregator platform which will showcase all these initiatives at one place now that does not mean we make it a data dump because you know all this information is out there you just have to google you just have to youtube so we wanted to be better than that now if a facebook can you know uh, do a lot of analysis and give you a kind of uh, insights based on uh, various uh, searches etc uh, that users are doing why can't we do it so here is this platform where our vision is that we will a uh, you know uh, collate all the information out there about schemes initiatives by all agencies and we have already completed the work for uh, central government uh, schemes for state government schemes and several fis second comes uh, you know the, uh, the role of technology where we will use uh, ai ml kind of a thing to for a uh, you know smart matchmaking third a uh, uh, smart engine which allows people to access that in information seamlessly fourth have as little interface you know human interface as possible uh, uh, so that uh, through technology we are uh, able to uh, you know reach out to a large audience uh, next have uh, indic language uh, content as well as various other you know uh, availability of this wep on various devices to reach out to the uh, community uh, pan india and uh, not be constrained that only you have to uh, uh, you know only through uh, uh, web based you can do it so whether a chatbot whether a app so all that needs all this is our vision is you know it is a process and next have uh, you know uh, uh, things like mentoring uh, compliance funding Uh, for all this do a baseline study do a gap analysis and then look for a uh, modules which are outcome oriented so you define the outcome and then you develop the uh, you know various uh, interventions and in addition to all that work with partners on the ground we don't want to duplicate anything we just want to amplify evangelize all the wonderful work which is being done but in silos in small pockets to collaborate and scale up uh, in the process 
and uh, have an offline module also because of last two years, you know, because of the pandemic, our offline work got a bit derailed. We hope to get back in the offline uh, space as well and look towards everybody to, you know, join hands. So here the role of developers come, they need to go on the platform and they need to come to us and say, look, this is what is missing. This is what you need to do. So I have explained the vision. Now the thing is do WEP 2.0 till now it was more ad hoc. Now we have got a lot of interest because the critical mass is there on the platform going forward. I, I hope we will have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, action happening on the platform. This is extremely inspiring, man. And especially, I think when we see technology playing a role and creating that impact on on large initiatives which are meant for community for society upliftment, I think that's that's truly awesome and very very inspiring. Thank you so much, ma'am, for spending your time with us today. I think there is a lot for for me. I have taken I'm taking back from this discussion, and there's a lot for everybody else who's listening to you to come and contribute back to to our nation building. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And I look forward to hearing from a lot of your uh, participants who perhaps are uh, listening to me uh, through this webinar. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll give back to the hosts.